Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be tackling a big old bag of skincare empties. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these videos. It'll feel good to clear this stuff out, especially because skincare has really not been my focus this year or really for the last year and a half, maybe even going on two years. I was pregnant for all, almost all of 2021 and that was when I did just really big reevaluations in my skincare routine. But I have still been in the mindset of using a lot of things up, and I think I've been very successful in doing so. I'm gonna try and list and link all the products down below in the description bar for certain brands. I think I do have some discount codes, which I will also make sure to annotate down below. I don't think I have any other announcements. This is gonna be probably a relatively long video, so let's do it. I'm gonna start with two products that are on the cusp of being used up. I have one or two more uses of each. Earthwise Ambrosia Du Serato Liquid Moisturizer and the Honua Hawaiian Beauty Water. Uh, these will go right back into my routine. I have one of each waiting in the wings. I love both of them. I use Ambrosia Du Serato every single morning, three pumps. It's my favorite. <laughs> I just really love it. Do have a 15% off code for Earthwise. and. Hawaiian Beauty Water by Honua is the only exfoliating toner style product I've used over the years that works for my skin and that I like and continue to repurchase. I use this once, maybe twice a week. It really depends on the state of my skin and, and what it's going through, but it's really gentle and I believe it only uses fruit acids and maybe white willow bark if I'm remembering correctly, but it's, it's great on my skin and I love it. In light floral tonic, completely empty. I'm almost done with another one. I guess it could have been like this, but I probably still have a couple of weeks of use of that. And then I do have another one waiting in the wings. So again, another staple product. I just love this toner. I talked about it more in, I think the holistic medicine cabinet video that I did um, a month or two ago with that balm promo with beauty heroes and inlight so if you want to hear more about that that is when i repurchased this marie veronique gentle gel there's actually half maybe even a little more than half in here but it has gone off very unfortunately which is weird because i think the expiration on the bottom says 423 but it is definitely bad it's probably a year or a year and a half old so Okay, yeah, never mind. It says here, use within six months of opening. It's definitely more than six months old and it smells rank. I do love this. I'm not sure I'll repurchase it right away, but especially in the spring and summertime, if I'm craving a little bit more, I guess, of a squeaky clean, it, it certainly is not a squeaky clean type of cleanser, but like if I'm wearing makeup and I have done an oil cleanse and then I wanna feel really fresh, this is generally what I go for. That's like the second or third of those that I've gone through. Uh, okay, a couple toners. Wow, don't even remember this at all. The Osha Sea Minerals Mist. This is years old. I can't even believe that I have not gone through this yet or discussed it, but I'm not the biggest fan of this brand. They just don't excite me even a little bit. I, I don't know, I've tried quite a bit too. This either came in a Beauty Heroes box or like a detox market box. And I used this, I remember literally two or three years ago to dampen a beauty blender. And I don't even use a beauty blender anymore because I just don't have the time. But yeah, I, I, that was like a use it up any way I could type of product. This is the Maker and Merchant Just Rose Hydrosol. I think this is nice. I remember learning about Maker and Merchant from Jessica Defino, the beauty journalist, and I purchased their jojoba oil and this rose hydrosol. I think they're nice for high quality, single ingredient staples. I'm not sure I would purchase this again, but for just a simple rose toner, the Coco Kind one, I think is maybe even a little bit better than this. And I haven't broken it down ounce by ounce, but I think per ounce, they're both nice and affordable. Two Living Libations, best skin evers in the smallest size that they do. This is the C. Buckthorn and this is the Rose. Used up both of these when I was pregnant. I had started cleansing my skin in the oil cleansing method of Donna Omari of Noi Skincare, who has really repopularized oil cleansing and even put kind of her own spin on it. 
which is using quite a bit of oil to continue to go over and cleanse, literally cleanse the skin with oil, not just do a makeup remover, but actually cleanse the skin with oil. And so I used these for that. I saw really good results. I don't have as much time now to do that, but I'd like to get into it. It is also very product intensive. You end up using anywhere from eight to 15 pumps or more of oil to do a cleanse but it, it is very effective and very nice. Again, really old product. I just am thinking about how long some of this stuff has been in here and I can't believe that I, I haven't done an empties since I used these things up. Moss Bursalest Honey Infused Rinsable Cleansing Balm. I think this brand is still around. It's been on the scene for a long time. I remember Moss from 2015, 2016 probably. Small range pretty uh, high price point, but I had always remembered this product. I had tried a sample of it many years ago and I ended up buying this from Pink Moon, who I think no longer stocks the brand. This was okay. I didn't like this full size as much as I remember liking the product when I had first tried it and felt like I got really good results, but there's so many variables and so much has changed. In general, I just, I didn't like the emulsification on this. I don't, I'm sure it has, the formula has been updated too since I first tried it. I just found the emulsification and the rinse off to be too clean for my liking, similar to something like a Mahalo Unveil. I think that's the name of the Mahalo cleansing balm. I think at this point, I just, I prefer pure Manuka honey to do a cleanse with, but I did use it up. Infiore Raffermi Saint Fleur. I think I probably have other Infiore in here. Oh yeah, I see another Infiore, Infiore thing. Oh, two more Infiore things. All right, I'm only seeing these three for now. There could be, I think there may be another Fleur Vibrant Serum Serret in there, but not sure. Fleur Vibrant Serum Serret, Raffermi Saint Fleur, and then this is pretty much empty Velite. Okay, the intel I can give you on this is that this product is being reformulated. I don't think that it's gonna be in a compact though. I think it's gonna be in a tube like this, but it is set for release sometime I think this year, if I'm not mistaken, formulated in France with the same all-female team that did Fleur Vibrant, Fleur Vibrant Serum Serret and I will definitely be, be trying it for sure. I loved this. I'm absolutely gonna, of course, save this beautiful compact it's art for sure. Fleur Vibrant Serum Serret. This was the only product I used on my skin for two months postpartum and my skin was really good. I was not even, I was like doing water cleansing and using this because I was so shooketh with everything going on in my life after I had my second baby and we moved several weeks later. Um, I actually have one more of these that I keep meaning to bust into because I haven't used Infiore in five, six months now and I'm missing it. Raffermi Saint Fleur is from the Made in Japan collection. I'm actually not sure if you can still get this. I know that the Made in Japan collection was getting phased out of the US market. So I don't know, but I did like this. It was recommended to me by an esthetician at International Orange the last time I had a facial there. I thought it was nice for a simple skincare routine. I felt like it was very hydrating to my skin and, and refining over time, used it all up. I mean, you guys know, I have so many past videos on Infiori. I'll try and put some of them below if you wanna check them out. Okay, a couple Henoa products. The Nourishing Oil Cleanser, which is completely empty, and this is, pretty much empty too, the recharging moisturizer. Now I used the entire oil cleanser up when I was pregnant. This is a really nice basic, but very high quality oil cleanser if you're avoiding essential oils, but you still wanna do an oil cleanse. Um, it's with oat and lingonberry. This was sent to me by the brand. They are, I wanna say, finish and i had discovered them i believe through indie beauty expo awards project and then they also sent me the recharging moisturizer which i had my husband kave use because i don't use moisturizers and this is i think his favorite moisturizer i've ever given him and we've been married for what four four and a half years at this point he absolutely loved this these products are pricey and I think they're a little hard to get. Maybe they've expanded their distribution since over the last couple of years, but I do recommend the oil cleanser and it lasts a long time. It's a good size. I get asked a lot like my 
you know, favorite brands and it's always the same. It hasn't changed in a while. Earthwise, Inlight, Lapar, Infiore. And then I would say, I always feel like Kahina and Carrie Gran and to some extent Audacity are kind of my runners up because I really love certain things from those brands and Yuli as well, but I really don't deviate very much at all from those being my favorites. Okay, two empty nap in the meadows. I actually don't use this on my skin because it's too strong. I get a burning effect if I use it on my skin unless I dilute it or buffer it with an oil underneath. Um, I actually love this in my hair. This is a holy grail hair. Um, not treatment, I guess, but I wake up in the morning, do my morning routine, brush my hair to get my scalp kind of stimulated with a wooden bristle brush, and then I take two or three pumps and put this through the ends. I think I actually have one more bottle because this came in a Beauty Heroes box, and then um, I think Earthwise has sent me bottles here and there. So yeah, if you can't use this on your skin, it makes a wonderfully nourishing hair product that I adore. I apparently also have two empty ambrosia ducerados in case you thought i was lying about loving it so much uh this is one of my like top three products from the brand i just really really like it it's essential oil free as well for anyone that's of that persuasion uh let's see i have two empty rosas the whole fruit rosehip seed oil that earthwise does this is a spectacular product if you want something very simple but very effective. It's often marketed as a retinol alternative, but I just find it to be extremely nourishing and skin perfecting over time. It just keeps my skin looking its best, I think. Um, I haven't been using it lately just because I've been mostly using Lapar, I would say, of the last four or five months, but I always kind of cycle back in and out of these top brands of mine. And this is by far the one that I would recommend over the Pi Bio Regenerate, which to me, I don't think it's a whole fruit rosehip seed oil and I have had rancid ones of those. I really recommend this one and I had used the Pi one exclusively for years and years, but I feel like once you try Rosa, you kind of can't use anything else. That's my experience. I have a mini of Magical Babasu. This is another favorite of mine. I'm almost, I guess maybe I have a quarter of a bottle, a full-size bottle of Magical Babasu. This is a really good fall and winter skincare product. I reviewed it extensively in my review of the oils in oils and oil serums in Earthwise's range. And I'm planning to do a review of the cleansers, toners, and uh, water-based serum. So that would include Ambrosia and Nap. So that's why those haven't been reviewed extensively yet. The oils have. And then this I reviewed as well, the Green Leaves Face Balm. I love this as a cleansing balm. Um, it's an expensive way to use it because the price point is a little steep, but it's, it's so nice. It has a violet smell. Uh, it's a coconut oil with, let's see what else, rosemary, thyme, violet leaf, lavender, holy basil. It just makes a beautiful cleansing oil. I, I don't like it as much as a leave-on, but coconut oil for cleansing has always done, done me right, I guess. So I did a whole review of the three balms. At the time there were three, now she has added Isadora, a fourth. But I did do a Beauty Heroes review of that because that launched in a Beauty Heroes box from this past February. I don't think I've ever talked about this anywhere, but a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to try the Inlight Supreme Face Serum System. Beauty Heroes doesn't stock this, but you can get it directly from Inlight's UK website. It's a month long series. So for the first week you use this serum, second week this, third week this, fourth week this. They have gemstones in them. Um, beautiful experience. You're basically not supposed to use anything other than this and a simple cleanser and toner. And it's just a beautiful skin reset. It's nice to do at transitional points of the year. I'd actually like to do another series myself. And I, I loved it. I thought it was incredible. And like does no wrong in my mind, in my eyes, in my experience. Okay, I have an empty chocolate mask and an empty superfood mask. These are the two masks that Inlight does. I currently have a superfood mask. I had replenished that during the um, balm gift with purchase that I worked on with Beauty Heroes and Inlight. I love both of these. They're so nice to put on if you soak in the tub. 
They're just very supportive to the skin. The ingredients are impeccable. I have a face oil and a makeup remover. Again, Beauty Heroes doesn't carry this. I wish that they did. If enough of you request it, they probably would start stocking it. It's really nice. I used this as an eye makeup remover. I think you probably could use it all over the face, but beautiful eye makeup remover. So when I order directly from InLight's site, I would get another system and another makeup remover because I loved it. Beauty Heroes does carry the face oil. It's really nice. It's a nice introduction to the brand. It has a light vanilla scent, very easy to use. Um, yeah, nothing bad to say about that at all. I have an empty under eye revive. I'm actually almost done with another. And then I have another <laughs> to use. Uh, it's just a really, really nice, mostly PM product for me. A lot of Inlights balms are very interchangeable though. Uh, you can use kind of most of the balms around the eyes or you could use this one all over your face if you wanted to, um, but the ingredients are more targeted for concerns that people might have for, for around the eyes. And then I have two minis of the balms, the turmeric and calendula and the propolis and tea tree. I now have full sizes of these that I'm working on that stay in my kind of hybrid medicine cabinet skincare because they can be used both ways. Again, talked about it a lot in that video that I did from a couple months ago if you wanna hear more. All right, now let's pull out the Lapar that's in here. This is very reflective of, of me, you know, my, my skincare. What well, my skincare just really has, has coalesced around. Oh wait, one more in light a calendula and damask rose balm here. Oh, this one is not completely empty. I'm not quite sure why I threw it in. This one is old and maybe did slightly go off. I would say it takes two and a half to three years for these to be not good anymore. And this is probably four years old, but I had just gotten fresher ones. So I think I stopped using it. And then I have another empty, mini of the calendula and damask rose in light on not on beauty heroes beauty hero sells the full size balms but if you go to inlight's direct site they sell a little skin aid kit of the five i think five or six but i think it's five minis that look just like this in a little pouch if you want to try them before you get the larger sizes god i love this brand so much this is what i've been using most lately okay I have two empty from the Kairos collection. This uh, was the Boxwalla November box, I think. And this is Smooth Operator, which is my very favorite, and Elastic Love, which is my second favorite. I still have Summer Wine, which I'm using up as a body oil. That was kind of my least favorite of the trio, but I loved them so much that I bought another box on 35% off when Boxwalla was, um, you know, kind of clearing out some of their back stock. These stay good for a long time, so I'm not worried about them, you know, being a little, they were produced for that November box, but in my opinion, they stay good for a long time. Smooth Operator with Earthwise Ambrosia du Serato is my kind of holy grail morning skincare routine. It's, this one smells like coffee. It has like some coffee byproducts, extracts. Arabica roasted husk extract and like some other, the story behind these is just amazing. I could do a whole video on them and probably should. In the summertime, uh, sometimes I just need Ambrosia du Serato, but if I'm wanting to use an oil, Smooth Operator on top is so nice. Elastic Love is also a very flexible oil. I can use it AM or PM. I'm actually using a mini of this right now. And it also just has such a beautiful smell. It's a little fruitier um, and this one is kind of more savory. I have the Elemental Day Silk 12% non-nano zinc fluid. I absolutely love this. I have not repurchased it. Um, my SPF needs for this summer have been the Le Prunier, which came in a limited edition Beauty House box and Farizad's Veil by Earthwise if I need it. But I haven't been using SPF as much, I'll be honest, but that's what I'm using right now. I would repurchase this in a heartbeat though. You have to like something dewy uh, whereas the Le Prunier is very mattifying. So a lot of people prefer that. If you want something with a, a dewier, glowier finish, this is incredible. I also felt like it just benefited my skin. You know, it's truly skincare with the zinc oxide in it and perfect for every day. I just loved it. 
I have the Even Lavender Mineral, Mineral Water Clarifying Face Tonic. This was gifted to me by a very dear patron of mine and I enjoyed using it so much. I think they also do a Rose Mist and a Yuzu Mist and in their upcoming Black Fridays, whatever upcoming Black Friday holiday sale they do in November, I'm gonna be picking up their Yuzu products because I am Yuzu obsessed. I'm currently testing the Yuzu whole food vitamin C face serum and then I'm gonna try the Yuzu Mist. I'm also trying the Rose Harmony Serum. I would love to try the Rose Mist, just amazing. And then I have the Velvet Soul Lip Balm. I think this is almost done. I, there was just a tiny bit left and it was it had started to go off after about three, maybe even closer to four years. And then I did fully, oh, this is actually not Lapar, sorry. This is Precious Skin Elixirs, but yeah, the Velvet Soul. Uh, I love it, really, really nice. Beautiful, you could use that on your face. You don't just have to use it on your lips. You know, I loved this. I mostly loved Blue Opal for aromatherapy. It was too strong for my skin, uh, but beautiful, beautiful product. Marissa, the formulator of Precious Skin Elixirs is a friend of mine and I think she makes really beautiful stuff. Blue Alchemy Cleansing Oil. This is one of those products, like maybe of this whole video that I was just really, really glad to be done with. This was the second bottle of it and I have to say I enjoyed it significantly less, this, less the second time around. Uh, it lasts forever though, so it is kind of deceiving because it doesn't look like it's gonna last forever and then it kind of does. I just really got fatigued on the scent, which is very lemon drop, citrus, which I like. I just was was really, ready to be done but i felt very accomplished when i finished the whole thing <laughs> the prickly pear seed roller ball this actually i i just filmed a video for patreon i do an exclusive video there every month and i for this month or for july i went through my 40 item wish list <laughs> uh, i'm going on a three month no buy as well august september october uh, no buy for me, no beauty products, no makeup, no skincare. The only exceptions are if I need to replace something, like maybe a mascara, but I think I'm gonna be okay with beauty products. It's quite possible I'll have to replace like some personal care products like toothpaste, shampoo, body wash. But yeah, makeup and skincare, three month no buy. Can I do it? The world is waiting. <laughs> to know um but yeah this this was on that it's kind of I, I have gone through many of these and i sort of use the wish list on beauty heroes as a repurchase list as well there's also i talked through a bunch of new things that i'm interested to try as well so if you want to see that patreon.com slash lamore la musique it's the second tier the seven dollar a month tier and then you also get access to an archive of like 60 videos that i've done over the last three four years over there um, yeah, I love this. This is so good around the eyes. This little guy is I think 40, $40, five milliliters. It lasts a good couple months and similar to uh, Earthwise Rosa, I just really appreciate these very high quality single oil products. Kahina Argan Oil, nothing beats this for me as a pure argan oil. I think it's fantastic. I used this up while I was pregnant in 2021. Uh, so again, really good pregnancy skincare products. Rosa from uh, rosehip seed oil, argan oil, prickly pear seed oil, the Le Prunier, plum kernel oil. Another good one that I'm really curious about is the Kalahari melon seed oil, single oil that Beauty Heroes just started carrying. Okay, and then this is the Kahina lip and face balm. I used most of this. Yeah, I made really good work of this. Uh, it just got a bit old. I loved it. This was again, just, I kind of got in the groove of using it. I would pair it with Serum Serret if I needed a little extra moisture over top. It had a really nice light, refreshing citrusy scent i liked the texture i used it all over my face i did not just use it on my lips or around my eyes or anything but i also like i'm gonna repurpose this pot i think it's beautiful kahina is definitely definitely up there in that kind of top echelon of brands for me okay i have a honua olina beauty oil bought this when i was pregnant and i was a little let down by it i didn't like it as much as i typically do and I have liked this a lot in the past because I have always paired it with the Aloha Youth Serum, which I really am not a fan of now that they added Bakuchiol to the formula. I wish they had not done that and I would probably still be using it. Uh, it's just not an ingredient that I really wanna 
overuse um, and it's in some other like it's in uh, black locust farming concentrate with earthwise which I like and use sparingly as well but yeah this with Aloha Userum if you like Bakuchiol amazing pairing and essential oil free so another good pregnancy postpartum option sensitive skin option these are the night repair elixir and the purifying oil they're both empty i think i did use them each partially up as body care just to get through them i do think they're really nice gressa is currently doing i think a 30 percent off sale on everything which they do maybe quarterly so it is worth in my opinion waiting around till they do a 30 percent off sale to pick up um your stuff. I, for me, I think Gressa makeup is really where it's at for me, but I did love getting to try these and I like the cleanser a lot. It's for an emulsifying cleanser, it's very gently emulsifying and leaves enough of a residue behind that it's, it's okay in my book. <laughs> Not a pure oil cleanser, does emulsify slightly, but really, really nice. And yeah, these are, are lovely and I know she sources very high quality stuff. I tried the pumpkin mask. And I liked this. This would be a really nice fall skincare purchase with the Siberian pineapple serum that I have yet to try. Really curious too. Um, and I may pick it up this holiday season to try. But this is really, it's just seasonally really nice for fall. Definitely smells like pumpkin. You get a really gentle, depending on how long you leave it on, uh, resurfacing effect. Um, it's my favorite of the three treatment products that she does, Dirty Pretty Things and the Refining Polish, which both have ascorbic acid in them, which is a little dries out my skin a bit. I don't think this has that in it, but this is more of an enzymatic type of exfoliator that I think is lovely. Probably one of my top skincare picks from Gressa would be that in the cleanser. Audacity Acai and Rose Serum Concentrate. I love these little boosters. Probably my favorite products from the line. Talked about them a lot in the interview that I did with Valerie Granduri, the person behind Audacity. There's a podcast interview in my archives with her. It was a lovely interview and we talked about these as kind of the foundation of the brand and how to use them and whatnot. For anyone wondering, I, my podcast is not dead. I have been recording solo shows and publishing them to Patreon. When my three and a half, 3.7 year old goes to preschool next month, I'm gonna restart the interviews on the public feed. Um, so I think that's basically what I've decided to do. The public feed is gonna be for interviews and Patreon is gonna be for solo shows that I've done and will continue to do. Uh, I also have an Agent Natur Ageless Face Serum. Agent Natur skincare, I've taken a long time to form opinions on. I honestly used this as a perfume oil because I did like the way it smelled, but it was way too strong for my skin. And I've had the opportunity to try some other things. I think that the brand is just intense. Like the stuff is strong, results oriented. And uh, I do think it's worthwhile if your skin can tolerate it. My skin just needs, I'm, I'm a little bit too sensitive, I think and I feel a little overpowered by Agent Natur stuff, but as a perfume oil, I did love that a lot. I have a mini Yuli, not a mini, but you know, not a full size of the Yuli Halcyon facial cleanser. I like this, this is my second or third one of these, and I've liked it progressively less as time has gone on, I will say, but I have several Yuli products that I talked about in this Patreon video for this month on my wish list that I'm planning to pick up this fall. I do love the brand. Their ingredient lists are impeccable and so interesting to me. Um, and I feel really kind of aligned with them and their approach to skincare for the most part. They do use some ingredients in some of their formulas that I'm not into, like epidermal growth factor. That's kind of the main one, I think. They might use a synthetic retinol as well, but they kind of have something for everyone, I guess. This is nice. I found it to be on the borderline of being too clarifying for my skin. I prefer something like Marie Veronique Gentle Gel, which is that that step more gentle for sensitive skin uh, while still getting a really refreshing cleanse, if that makes sense. Blissoma Light Shifting Solution Photonic SPF 25. I got to try this when it first launched three, four years ago and I loved it. I continue to like it. In fact, I think I have a backup bottle of this. Um, it's not as easy to use as something like La Par Day Silk, which I just find I can kind of slap on, or even the Le Prunier, you slap it on, it blends in really easy. This takes a tiny bit of work. 
um, but it does dry down very matte and it has a lot of nice um, herbal infusions and I in general really like Blissoma's approach to skincare. Kind of hit or miss with some of this stuff, but this is definitely a hit for me with the brand. And that was in a past Beauty Heroes box, maybe from last year. This is kind of skincare body care, but we can talk about it. It's the Eugenia Pregnancy Formula Shea Butter. Again, got this when I was pregnant with my second baby. Used most of it up, and I did use this on my skin. I was going through an ultra simple time where I was basically doing simple oil cleanse, argan oil, shea butter on my face, rose toner, like the basics, right? Because my first and into my second trimester, my skin was finicky, not in terms of breakouts, but just like really dull, lifeless, dry, dehydrated, obviously very hormonally driven. But I, it did re recalibrate and get nice and pregnancy glowy. And it was also the season, right? I was, I got pregnant in January and I gave birth in October. So I really got to ride out that rest of the second and third trimester through like the summer and, and early fall. But yeah, I, I did use this on my belly and uh, I thought it was, I thought it was nice. This little tin is kind of deceiving. You get quite a bit of product and it does last for, for a while. Um, this is the Live Botanical Sanctuary Barrier Balm. Totally empty. Meant to be a skincare product. It was in a past box walla box from years ago, but similar to Earthwise Nap in the Meadow, this ended up being a hair product for me. And I used it as a styling balm through the ends of my hair if my hair was starting to look dry. Uh, and I honestly really liked it for that. I'm currently using the Live Botanical Moon Cycle Balm in the same way to try and use up. And I will give it to Live Botanical. The blends have stayed good and potent for years now. I mean, these are old and the Moon Cycle Balm is probably two, three years old and it still smells really nice and is functioning really well. I have unpopular opinions about this brand, to be honest. I won't, I don't think it's worth getting into here. Uh, I've been also hit or miss with the things that I've tried, but these balms, you know, I, I, I do think that they've been nice. Okay, last thing, Sade Baron Moi Beauty Balm. This is an old detox market PR product and I, I don't know why I ended up liking this so much. It's not empty, but I did use a fair amount of it. And it, it did turn, um, but very simple ingredients. This turned me on to feeling like I really wanted just like a chubby balm stick in my skincare cabinet. And I'm now using the Coco Kind Matcha Balm and it's very simple. I tend to just use it around on my lips, but you can put these in a bag and you know use them as a hand moisturizer, or chapped parts of the skin. I don't know, it's an aesthetic thing. I just like, I like the chubby balm stick. That's it. There's like a few little makeup things down here that shouldn't be in here, so you can hear them. But that is it for the skincare. I feel like we were pretty expedient getting through all that. I think it's very abundantly clear what my skincare perspective and philosophy is. And it's really just for me, you know, like that's what really works for my skin. Um, I think I'm gonna start putting, cause I've seen, other beauty YouTubers. I've got kind of, I'm kind of getting back into YouTube. I feel like YouTube is making a bit of a resurgence, uh, at least in the pockets that, that I'm in. And I've been watching Michelle Wong. I'm sure a lot of you know her and watch her, but I'm really enjoying her to get my beauty YouTube fix. And she puts a nice little thing in her description bar about her age and her skin type. And I find that to be helpful. So I might start doing the same, you know, like what my skin type is, age, no fillers, no anything like that. Because I think it's it's like a helpful reference point, especially in this world that has become increasingly buffered, filtered, artificial, and it it's hard to tell, you know, what's real and um, yeah. But anyway, I just enjoy sharing what works for me and I plan to keep it up. Skincare minimalism for life. <laughs> and I really think it works. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. After I publish a video, I try and get on that night or the next night and reply to comments. I'm trying to be really good about that, so I definitely will reply. If you if you comment on a video weeks after I've published it, that's when it tends to get buried and I have a hard time getting to it, so I'm happy to reply to any questions in kind of that first couple days after I publish. 
all the places you can find me I'll have down below and on the end screen of this video. I'm active on Instagram, very active on Patreon. Uh, I'm redoing my website. I'm hoping to have that done in a couple months. It'll be much easier to navigate. And I think that's it. Hoping to see you guys next week. I'm really trying to get more content out and just kind of get back to my regular content schedule. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.